met Rita back in 2004 or 5 when our library wrote a grant and got started and just trying to become more accessible. Um, Rita was in the paper because she made some really neat board maker adapted books and donated them to her home library in Prospect Heights. And so um, I contacted her and she, as many of you know, um, was just so eager to get um, an accessible book for children into libraries so that um, kids can enjoy them. And, um, and so, I don't know if Rita wants to, to I'll just explain really quickly that um, this is a, this is um, Skokie Library's website from back after we finished our first year of recommended grant, we had a big community celebration called uh, Community Special Education Night. And um, Rita and her children were there because um, of what Rita and her, her um, what do you call it, organization, yeah. Leap into Literacy, donated um, for just the cost of supplies the um, 20 books for our collection. And so she and her children came as well as some other kids that were involved that first year. And um, Rita actually hasn't seen the pictures of her kids, Kiki and Marina. Um, she didn't know they were up here, so it's a little surprising. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to let Rita pass off to Rita and get behind the video camera so we can learn more about her books and how we can um, support her and her mission. Okay, as Holly said, uh, my name is Rita Antonini, and I adapt books for special needs children, and my inspiration is my daughter Kiki, up in the corner there. Uh, she was a quadriplegic, uh, nonverbal, and when I was looking for books in the library, I couldn't find anything that would suit her needs. The therapist that she went to for augmentative communication, which is uh, speaking alternatively, she was going to speak through board maker pictures and a computer. Uh, she had social stories, and the social story was going to the doctor or going to the dentist or first day of school. And they were about, I don't know, maybe 12 pages, very simple, four words per page listed out on board maker underneath. And I asked her, if there were any mainstream books, you know, fun books, Clifford or, you know, um, Berenstein Bears, anything. Uh, no, there isn't. And, and that inspired me to create a project with another uh, mother that I knew, Jody Miller, and we created Leap into Literacy. And with the help of Jill Center, who was Kiki's therapist, she helped us. Uh, designed the book, uh, gave us the basic blueprint to come up with how we would do this. And uh, then we took that idea and came up with our, our own version. And um, uh, just to, to go into a little bit, the first book that I created, I took a simple page that's in here and at the time I did not know this, that this page is actually two pages. And so I put some um, clear plastic, sticky back plastic, and pulled this page apart. And went through a book and pulled every page apart to post on a white piece of paper. And then I put the board maker picture underneath. And it took me like 40 to 50 hours to do that. Um, so, you know, that, that was, you know, Jill's version of, you know, this is how you can adapt a book. Uh, when I got up with, you know, when I met up with Jody, we started talking about how are we going to do this. Um, we need to make it simpler. We can't have people trying to, peer, you know, pull these pages apart. And we came up with the idea of laminate. And it was a learning process for us to see, you know, what kind of laminate. What, uh, what thickness and how many page, um, how many squares per page were we going to have on, how many squares per strip were we going to have on each page. Um, so we, we kind of just went through the whole process and by trial and error we came up with this. Uh, so this is the, the book and it starts off, we, we have four, um, Four communication 
pictures per page. And they're color coded for the parts of speech. And that is like a standard coding that some guru speech therapist determined. So we didn't come up with the, the color coding, but we decided to integrate that in, in our story. So my daughter was nonverbal, and this was important to me to have the communication in there to expand her vocabulary. But it wasn't also just for somebody that was nonverbal. It was for a child that had uh, fine motor issues, you know, that, that couldn't uh, turn the page of just a regular soft cover book. So by having the pages laminated, we would be able to put in page fluffers and, and they can work on turning the page and, and they don't have to worry about ripping it and they can get their fingers in between each one. So it wasn't just somebody who was nonverbal that we were aiming this book towards, but somebody who just maybe had fine motor skills. Um, so, um, and another issue with the, uh, another benefit of the laminate is that if a child had a compromised immune system, that the parent can, can wipe this off with a, a bleach wipe and sterilize the book for the child. Um, and then we made a, well, I shouldn't say we made. We printed out a communication storyboard. And so this is not in relationship to the actual story, but about reading a story. So a child can point to the communication board and say, you know, I'm all done, or read it again, or turn the page. So this was a communication with regards to reading the story. So one of my missions is to get the word out that these books are available. And I'm going to need your help. Uh, it, I started this project in 2004. And it was only until last year that I finally did a website. So the, the website, and I'm going to go through it, it just uh, basically tells the history of the project and where the books are. Let me just go down a bit. On this. So it has a picture of the books. It has our mission statements corporate sponsors, and those are the ones that have donated the bulk of the supplies, and the libraries that are currently <coughs> having it, and I know. Um, let me just back up. We had a project, a very ambitious project, with um, Gannett Foundation, or Gannett Corporation, and the Friends of Nathan Foundation. Uh, we were given a $5,000 grant to create these books, and we created 100 books on October, <coughs> remember the date was October, Make a Difference Day. And as, so we have this very ambitious project, and um, so <clears throat> we're, we're constantly doing projects. And my volunteers are usually high school students, um, adults, um, just uh, various groups. Um, uh, we've done mitzvah days for, you know, at the Jewish Center. Um, confirmation hours. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, um, these are the current libraries that I know have them. <laughs> and about just shows, um, this is Kiki and Jake, and those were the inspiration for the, the project. Um, Jake had autism, Kiki had cerebral palsy. Uh, both of them were nonverbal. And at the same time, we were both looking for something to uh, give, our, give our children the gift of reading, something that they could get their hands on. Um, it, as a side note, you know, we did do computer books, uh, and she used a switch to turn the page on the computer book. But there's something about actually having a book in your hand. You know, it just it was important to us. And so um, that is Jake and Kiki. <clears throat> On the bottom, that was our first fundraiser. And so for Jake and Kiki's birthday party, we threw a, sorry, for Kiki and Jake's birthday, we threw a backyard carnival party. And we invited classmates and school and family and friends. And we raised $4,000 to get the, the project started. So, that is our, our first, first fundraiser. And it just shows you 
all the books that are at that library. And so if you had somebody who was looking for, they've gone through you know, your entire collection of 10. Um, <clears throat> you can go on the website and see what other books other libraries have, and then through the interloan library system, send them over. Um, so I had a thought, but I lost it. Uh, well, it'll come to me. Um, so anyway, so if this is you know the resource that you have available to know where these books are. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. And so these books are very bulky, and. Originally, I, I thought, you know, I would give libraries big collections, and uh, I gave Prospect Heights 40, li 40 books. They were my library. And they're like, whoa, oh, you know, we don't have room to store these. And, and so as we were talking, you know, we came up with a, a, a number of 10 for each library so that the patrons would get to see what the book is about and decide if they wanted to, you know, try it out, use it, and then if they wanted more, they had um, all these other libraries that they can choose from that would have more books. So they could go to... So they can go, the library can look at any of these sites and, and find another book that would be appropriate. Um, way down below, I have a listing of every single book and the library it's at. So if you want to do it by alphabetical or by um, library, way back farther down is the, the listing by each book. Um, so one of my missions that I'm, gonna, I'm going to bestow upon you is to get the word out that these books are available. And so if you can contact your schools and tell them, you know, we have these books available at the library. And, uh, you know, come check them out. If we don't have them, they are available. And uh, I think that's it. Anybody have any questions? Yes? I've got a couple, actually. One is, uh, do you need volunteers? Do you have special ways? Do you, do you set up in a certain place? Do you... it, that's a good question. I forgot to talk about this. Um, what I do is I use Board Maker and I create strips, and I go through each page, look at the picture, and try and pick out the one sentence that's, that describes the picture. And I do the communication strips. And I, I get volunteers, and I, I never have a shortage of volunteers. <clears throat> but to... Um, to get the word out, I do travel around to different areas and, and, and what do I want to say, you know, expose them to the project, the, this, you know, group of, of volunteers. Um, so I, I have right now um, a project that I'm working on for 60 books. And so um, Northside Prep in Chicago is going to be doing a very unique spin on the program. They have a program where they call it colloquium, and they have 30 typical high schoolers from Northside Prep partnered with 30 special needs children. And they meet for three hours Wednesday morning, and they do projects together. They do certain things. Next Wednesday, they will be putting together books. So the special needs uh, teenager paired with their typically developing high school or teenager, will be working together to create these books. Um, and then I've got two other high schools that want to do it. So my limitation is how fast I can create these strips. And so um, right now I don't have any duplicates. And so I have to create each strip individually, which takes me about an hour and a half to go through the book and and do that. So it's like I, I cheat when I, I get duplicates. I go, oh, I can just print that off. Um, so at this point, I have volunteers that I don't have work for. <laughs> so I still have to do like 15 more books for the other high school that wants to do it. So it's, um, 
But I am open to volunteers. So if somebody wanted to get together a project, then you know I would do that. And it's more of a learning experience, like to expose people as to what this is outside of a special needs school. So you have, you know, say if you had a Friends of a Library group and you said, hey, I want them to do it. You know, this would just open their eyes that, you know, there's a need out there and, and you can help fulfill it. So, did you have another question? Um, copyright. Um, we are not altering the book. We have only just um, laminated it. And so. she's not reselling it because it's just a donation for supplies, right? right? And, 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 and you're giving yeah, them the, the um, well, actually, we don't even, you know, you if don't. we have funding, then we don't take donations. True. But um, it's just when we were caught up for money. <laughs> um, board maker allows us to use their their symbols as long as we're not selling it. Okay, so um, we don't have any copyright with regards to the book. It's just if somebody had punched holes in it and uh, just put another kind of binding on it. So the book is still the book. And the book has been purchased. So any other questions? Rita, when you were talking about volunteers, um, so I could kind of see this as, I don't know if you guys are with your tag team, your teen groups, or junior high, we're starting to do more service projects in the library. Mm -hmm. Is this something that, if you know, planned for far in advance, um, junior high students or high school students can yeah. do as a library project? Yeah, yes, yes. I mean, I have um, done teen groups at high schools. And so, um, as I had um, one, uh, I had one, uh, a parent I was showing the book to, and she brought it home, and her daughter said, ooh, I want to do this for my teen group at the church. And so we did a project at the church. And then somebody at the church said, hey, I want to do this at my high school. Well, I want to do this at my high school. Well, I want to do this at my high school. So now, you know, I've got three projects that I'm trying to prepare for by the end of May um, to do this. So it's like word of mouth. As the kids do it, they find that it's a really neat project and it really gives back to the community, to children that you know, they're in the schools now. Uh, they're, they're visible. Uh, children with special needs are out there. Um, and, and so I think this gives them a greater connection to how they live their lives and, and what, what struggles they go through. And so one of the things that we did was, you know, I, I had one of the teens put on mittens and try and turn the book, you know, the pages of this book. Um, well, she couldn't do it, she kept you know, trying to do it, but then I gave her the uh, binder with the page fluffers and you know, she was able to turn the page with mittens. So it kind of assimilated, this is how a special needs child who is, say, cognitively aware can read, but can open a book. And so this just gave them some insight into some of the struggles that a special needs child would have. We work with certain books, but basically, it's just a simple book like this. Um, you know, I like to say that it's you know third grade before they get into chapter books. Um, you have to have pictures because that's what the child is looking at. If the child is a pre-reader, and it, it helps them, they look at the picture and then they look at the symbols and try and get a sentence out of what the the picture says. So. Rita, when you were reading with Kiki and you were using these books, like what, how would you, the reader, typically utilize the book? Would you read the yes. original text? I would her? read the original text. So I would read her the story. And then I would re, uh, reiterate, look at the picture, and then read the strip. Okay, so you're reading the story like you normally would, but then you're trying to just stress out these these certain words, and it's a sentence that relates to what's happening in, in the picture. And so a child themselves, a pre-reader, would look at the pictures and maybe try and read the sentence by the pictures and looking at the, the overall picture. Uh, with regards to my daughter Kiki, um, 
her big task was to turn the page. So I'd place her, her hand here, and when she was ready, then she'd go, you know, and guess what? The page didn't rip. <laughs> so that, that was something that, you know, she had the independence to turn the page. I mean, she couldn't put her hand there, but she could flip it over when she was ready. So it was just her piece of independence to read the story by herself. Um, so, um, yeah, so it, it, it can be a child who is a reader but just can't turn the pages, they would read it independently. Um, uh, you know, but the, but the communication symbols there for a verbal child, they would also use that as a, a reference point to, to, you know, correspond the word with the picture and reinforce that, that, that word. Uh, yes, you know, this is, this is caged, but it's a cage, and so it's got to be something with a cage. And so he would see the word, and he would see the picture, and he'd put that together. So it's not only for nonverbal children. It is for children who are learning to read that would see the picture alongside the word and, and be able to piece it together. So, anything else? How will pages find they find them in the Do you have an adaptive section? Yes, yes. Uh, that's why I said they're very bulky. And so, Prospect Heights, because they were the first, they got 40. <laughs> and so, they have a, a big section that houses them. Um, but I don't know where other libraries store them. But if you have them, it, it's trying to get the word out to the schools. Come. And I think displays. Who's displays? Um, I know that the schools are aware of them at the Plains because I've been told that the schools come to your library and see the books, that, that they use the books while they're there. Um, so it, it's, it's reaching out to the school, saying, come to visit our, come visit our library. And, and look what we have. You know, this is, well, Skokie would have a lot more other programs, but here's something that we can offer you and at least the kids would be familiar with that these books are available, and aides, and teachers, and, you know, hopefully by word of mouth to parents, that they would come and get them for themselves.